to our Spotlight Conversation Program Podcast thing. Uh, write in the comments if, while you're watching this, you come up with a great name for what yes. we're doing. Perfect. I am Adam Novice. I am here with the wonderful Liz Wade. Liz, hello. Oh, thank you, Adam. Uh, hello. Hi. It's good to be here. Good. Uh, so this, this, if you are new to this program... Uh, we are talking about our week's featured program, which is Ecuadorian, I'm going to say it wrong, Finesca? Yep. Ecuadorian Finesca Soup. We will put a link to that program in the description, and we'll try to link to it a couple different places, and uh, you can listen yeah, to it. we need to decide, Adam, who needs to point... I probably you, probably you. This way? Other way. Okay, we'll put the link right here. Yeah. You think? <laughs> We're doing that thing where you point to the part of the screen <laughs> and down, like that. Uh, anyway, uh, so you can follow along with that program on our website. You can find it there. But we really encourage you to listen to that program. It's at a slower speed than we're talking. And then come back and listen to us talk about it. So yeah, or catch the yeah, yep. Usually yep. there's an advanced version, but there isn't an advanced version. So, I'm going <laughs> to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> uh so Liz, how are you today? We are uh going up. We are a week out towards the holiday of Easter, and yes. that is a I mentioned that because happy Easter, but also because that plays an important part in this program. Well, as you know, yesterday was Palm Sunday, so um, that's when Christians celebrate that um, Jesus came and people waved palms. Um, so now this is when, uh, yeah, the Holy Week where we lead up to Jesus' death and then resurrection on Easter Sunday. So this is a huge holiday celebrated in the United States. And all um, around the world. Yeah, yeah, all around the world. Sorry, I should have said that. Yes, <laughs> definitely all around the world. And um, as we will see in this program, or you already know if you've listened to this program, um, it's definitely celebrated in Ecuador. So, um, and then, yeah, this so is about... If you don't know where Ecuador is, yeah. uh, it, sure. I, as as an American in, who is very poor at geography... Give me a sense of the continent. Where would I find Ecuador if I'm going to look for it? Ecuador is in South America on the northwest corner. And it, the equator oh, yes. That's runs very through Ecuador. About Ecuador. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the equator which goes through the uh, middle of the Earth, an imaginary line which separates the Earth in half. Uh I, I think Ecuador is named after the equator, right? It's right on the equator. Yeah. Or whoever um, named the equator also named Ecuador. I don't know. And and I will say I have been to Ecuador, and it is a beautiful country with mm. um, probably the best weather I have ever experienced. Okay. Um, because it does lie on the equator. So. Yeah. I would like yeah, to go there. Origin there. Hmm? I would like to go there. I've never been. Yeah, maybe we need to plan a, a listener trip where we where we visit listeners everywhere around the world. Wouldn't that be so once great? Once this pandemic is over, we're we're all we'll be all about it. A I world know. tour. I feel like once this once this pandemic is over, I'm just going everywhere. Yeah, I'm not going to no, stay in my I'm house. Never anymore. coming home again. I'm just going to live on the yeah, road. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, this week uh, we're preparing for Holy Week, and uh, this program is about a food that is prepared in Ecuador uh, during Holy Week. So, um, yeah, and eating this food is a family tradition. It's, uh, yeah, it's a special food that people prepare and eat. It's got special meanings for the Easter holiday. Um, yeah. There are actually... It's not only a food that you eat uh, to sustain yourself, right? But a food right. that you can eat and remember things through. Right. There is food that has symbolism. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of traditions around the world where people use food to symbolize whether it's 
spices or a certain meat or not meat. Sometimes uh, right. there's uh, people eat fish around this time rather than meat. Um, and because they're giving up something for the season leading up to Easter. Um, Liz, do you have any uh, food traditions? I'm trying to think of uh, you know, on that level. We don't really have a big tradition. Um, well, I don't know. It depends. Usually my family does get together for Easter, um, and we usually travel to be with my husband's family. And so we're down there, but, uh, here's, here's a thing that you might not know about me, Adam, or you might already know this. Okay. Uh, I am a terrible cook. What? I, come on, you're being, you're being. No, bad. I wouldn't have, have put you as terrible. Oh yeah. I do not enjoy cooking. Um, I enjoy eating, but, okay. um, I don't do very much of the cooking in my house at okay. all. Um, even with recipes, like uh, my family just tells stories about how I mess up recipes. Really? Or, uh, yeah. Oh, it's bad. It's very bad. I am a good. I'm a good baker. I can bake okay. things like bread or cinnamon rolls or. So let's dive uh, into this that. a second, if we can. <laughs> Was your were your parents? Um, did they enjoy cooking or baking? I'm trying to think. We're talking about traditions, and traditions usually get passed on from grandparents yeah. to parents. To... I, my mom would often make a, a very big meal. Um, it okay. was simple food, so it might be like um, a turkey or a ham or um, something like that, and then maybe some some mashed potatoes or like mm -hmm. a, a dish with squash. Um, and some vegetables, you know, broccoli or cauliflower, um, just all very basic things. And she did like to try new things every once in a while. But the one thing I do remember from um, her cooking is that she would invite anyone who didn't have mm. anywhere to go. And um, we would always have someone extra at our holiday table, whether it was Easter or Christmas or Thanksgiving. Um there would always be room for people to join if they didn't have somewhere to go. That so, is that is uh, very sweet. She had a very big sense of hospitality and an open door, as we said. Yes. Yep. Exactly. And there was always too much food. Um, okay. You know. Uh, so the joke was that nobody could leave until all the food was finished. And then everyone would laugh and laugh because there was so much food, no one could finish it. No one could ever leave. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, so I don't really, I don't really do any of the baking, uh, or okay. sorry, I don't really do any of the cooking for a holiday meal. Sometimes my mother-in-law will ask me to bring something. Mm -hmm. Uh, she'll say, you know, can you make the mashed potatoes or can you make the rolls or whatever? But she tries to, um, ask me to bring very simple things because yeah. she knows I'm not good at it. Yeah. But she does make a very elaborate meal. She likes to try very fancy recipes and do okay. um, special foods. Uh, but uh, that's fine for me. Yeah. I like to go and eat it and spend time with family and, and do that. Well, you would do well with my my mother, who loves to cook. And oh, she, yeah. she, she will say, what can we bring to the holiday meal? And she'll say, well, why don't you bring... Uh, a, a pie, a dessert. Yeah. She'll, she'll, and then she'll, she'll add. Well, I, I also will have a pie. So this yeah. will be the second. I was just gonna ask. The, also, like, also make pies as yes, well. Yes. <laughs> yes. Usually, for, for there, there may be seven of us, and we'll have three pies, different flavors, or it, it's it, again, yeah. it's too much food. And I think yeah. I think there has to be something about how a, you you if part of the holiday is having more than you need, right? Like that's the celebration right. where you don't feel a lack, yeah. where you don't feel like you're you're missing on anything. So I think that's yeah. I think that's probably something that happens. You know, I think that's got to be a sort of. Uh... A worldwide thing. I would love to hear what people have to say about that in the comments below. Yeah. Like, is that is that normal? Do you, I mean, of course, 
you know, there are times when you don't maybe have enough money to feed as many people as you want or, um, you know, to get the, the ingredients that you want or, or whatever case. But um, I think even in those times, people have the the want to have there be a celebration and to put all of your resources there and to be together with family. I'm I'm curious if that's something that uh, that people also experience. I would love to hear about it in the comments. Or I, I think uh, if your family, let us know if your family <laughs> was also like like Liz's mother, very hospitable. If you invited people into your yeah. home uh, at because it's the holiday or at any time, let us know. Tell us a story about uh, about when that happened in in your life, and if it, that's a tradition yeah. that you've continued. Yeah, I wonder if that's a thing culturally that is the same. Um, you know, inviting a person into your home um, uh, rather than going out or whatever. So, yeah, I would love to know that. Yeah. Um, speaking of baking, Adam, while well, we were speaking of baking a few minutes ago, we do also have um, a, a video in our uh, video extras or holiday videos um, about making a baked treat for in the U.K., Yes. So obviously Adam and I are not from the UK. We're from the US, but we do have people who make Spotlight who are from the UK. And they made a video about a very popular baked good there called Hot Cross Buns, which um, you know, I know a little song about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do too. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, it is often a song you learn uh on the piano or the the recorder. Yeah, or the uh, recorder. Yeah. I wish I had my recorder here. It's probably it's probably nearby. I could play it for you, but <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. Should I do a little concert? No. Um, but anyway, it's about hot cross buns, and then uh, I have actually never had a hot cross bun. Oh, have you had a? No. Yeah, I I, I mean I always. I always know about them because, you know, they're in the song and I play the recorder. But, um, yeah, as far as eating one, I have never. Yeah. Did you know that they have, like, dried fruit in them? Only because of this video. Yeah. See, I didn't know that either. Um, and then also they have to be um, – there's something about the dough where it has to, like, sit for a really long time or, oh. or something like that. And well, the it sounds like you and I need to go watch this video. I know, right? Yeah. I'll link that over here. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> Bing! Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, we ho we are so glad that you have uh, stuck with us as we've rambled on. But um... Oh, before... Okay, I just wanted to say... Um, this this program is about finesca soup in general, but there are more programs that we have about Easter foods around the world. So um, if you have a food that you commonly eat around Easter, you can check out this program and see if uh, see if we mention your food. And if not, tell us about it. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, we hope you've really enjoyed this conversation. I always enjoy talking to you, Liz, and uh, I feel thrilled and privileged. We always say that Spotlight has the best audience. You guys are yeah. wonderful and kind and sweet, and we hope that this has helped you on your English journey. Practice listening to two native English speakers. Um, make sure that you like and subscribe to this video on YouTube, but also check out our Facebook and Twitter and our website, um, and our podcast, wherever you're looking for us, we try to be there. Um, yeah. So we hope you have a, a good day. And uh, yeah, and happy Easter, Adam. Happy Easter, Liz. Mm -hmm.